In the last video, I got this Galaxy S6 and I roasted the heck out of it. The lag is so bad. It was the laggiest thing that I've seen in my whole life. And so many of you told me to get a custom ROM. Install my custom ROM. All right, let me give this phone a second chance and see if I can save it. So first of all, what is a custom ROM? Well, all I know is that it's gonna help me install newer Android versions like Android 12, because right now, I'm stuck on Android 7. It's also gonna allow me to install the apps that I couldn't do previously, like Audible, for example. And apparently, I get a big performance boost because the performance was not good. But I'm gonna have to learn all of this because I've never installed a custom ROM before. So I'm actually gonna have to do some research. So, what is a custom ROM? Rome. So a custom ROM is an altered or modified version of Android created by third party developers. They improve performance and offer more functionality. So basically, I can get Android 12, I think. What Android version to get for Galaxy S6? Android 14 for the S6. Yeah, I don't think anyone has figured out how to do this. Actually, wait, some of you said it needs lineage, lineage, lineage OS? Uh, Android 12 13 apparently that's possible. So let me try that. Okay, so I found this lineage OS 20 on Android 13 for the Galaxy S6 Let me download that see if it works Galaxy S6 So I'm in the UK, so I have Exynos. So I assume I download this one Hey, look if the phone bricks or completely gets destroyed not my fault, okay? Actually, I blame you. If this breaks, it's your fault. Wait, no, NA is North America. I think I need this one. <sighs> Lineage OS 20. I, I downloaded the wrong one. So what do I even do with this file? I think I need, to, I need to watch this video again. Apparently, while this is downloading, I need to plug in my phone for USB into my laptop. So, the problem is, it's a... the fat one. It's not the Type-C, and my MacBook only has Type-C, so I need an adapter. Okay, so we plug in one end into the Mac, the other end into the phone. It's not showing up. Oh, it's because I have a Mac. Come on. I have to do this on Windows. Oh, no. Look at what I have to do. Guys, look at this. This is my setup. My PC is not even plugged in. I'm going to have to plug this in just to install this. Okay, I think I got everything set up. I got the S6 plugged in, and as you can see, phone so we just take the file go to the s6 and then we paste it here and yeah that's it the phone is rooted thanks for watching okay so i'm gonna shut down the phone i assume and i'm gonna hold volume up power button and the home button at the same time i mean I i'm seeing something oh installing system update okay is is that the update i just downloaded no command what oh guys look at this menu i have never seen this menu before okay so what do i do what is this just let it go and it should automatically boot into the TD. I don't have that. I have this. And then I spent the next couple minutes confused because I had no clue what TWRP menu he was talking about because my phone didn't have it. And then I've realized something. Oh, I need a custom recovery. So I think this is what he's talking about. TWRP recovery. Guess I need that. So what do I do with this? How to flash TWRP on Samsung devices, Odin method. There's a whole different layer of things I have to do. So step one, unlock OEM, which apparently this phone is international, so I don't need to do that. Step two, start Odin and restart your phone into download mode. How do I start Odin? What is Odin? I didn't realize how complicated this would be because I had no clue what Odin was and I don't know what the heck any of these guys were talking about. I was actually thinking of giving up because I was so fed up with it. I figured out that TWRP was some kind of custom recovery image for Android, whatever that meant. But then it got even more complicated. What the hell is this? Okay, so for TWRP, I found a list of devices, S60 FLTE and S6 LTE GT S6. How am I supposed to know this? And then I found out this really useful video, which showed me exactly what files I needed to install this custom recovery page. Okay, I got that. Volume down button. Okay. The home button and the power button all at the same time like this. Oh, something's happening. Up where it says IDCOM, this should be blue. If it's- It's not, it's not blue. There's, no, there's nothing here. I mean, it does say it's downloading something, but 
I'm really hoping it works. I spent so long trying to figure out why this stupid phone wasn't being detected, so I installed a different Odin version and installed some Samsung drivers that would let my PC detect the phone. And while the drivers were installing, I got a little carried away. <laughs> Enough of that. I see it. Look, it's detected. I can actually do something now. And guys, I think we've done it. It's passed, succeeded. Let's go. Luckily, the Samsung drivers fixed the situation and my PC could finally detect the phone. Guys, look at this. I I've done something. Okay, so we have this screen here, which I think means we can install Lineage OS because I have it on the phone already. We have started the installation process. We are actually making progress. I cannot believe this. Although this loading bar gave me a sense of hope, in life, you begin to learn that you should not trust them because when it was time to boot, this happened. Uh, I hope it doesn't get stuck in this loop forever because it's been here for a couple minutes now. I think you could hear in my voice that I started to get worried because this little booting animation was there for like 20 minutes. And then I saw the Samsung boot logo flash and... Oh. Oh. The whole booting animation just restarted and again and again for over 40 minutes until finally we made it. Lineage OS. It was time to set it up and see if my phone has just turned into the S25 Ultra. Just look at this, brand new menu, almost no apps, gesture navigation, there was no need for the home button anymore. But then the notification panel just got stuck and it wouldn't pull down for some reason. But then I fixed it and this thing looks like a Google Pixel with its round media controls and the settings menu looks clean and doesn't lag. The camera app is also revamped and feels a lot faster. Taking photos didn't feel completely completely terrible and previewing the photos also wasn't the slowest thing ever. I then went online to see how it performs there and I was surprised how it was actually pretty snappy. The web page loaded pretty quickly and I didn't see much stuttering when scrolling. But the story doesn't end there because Lineage OS doesn't come with any Google apps so you don't even get the Play Store to download any of the apps. But we made it this far so why don't we finish what we started. And so I did some research and apparently Mind the G apps would bring back the Google apps so I downloaded it, dragged it into the root folder and apparently I was able to use the Mac for this now, which kind of makes me look stupid now. I went to install the package through the custom recovery page and I instantly got an error. Okay, no problem, we'll just try another app. So I tried Nick G apps and as soon as I clicked on it, I immediately got an error so I knew I wasn't doing this right. And I really didn't want to do anything complicated anymore because Installing the operating system gave me PTSD, so I did it anyway. Six million hours of research later, I get to this recovery page where I do a factory reset. I then reboot to recovery and what the heck even is this page? It feels like I'm hacking into my own phone and then it just got stuck. I was pressing and holding all the combinations of buttons until something worked. And then I came to the conclusion that I need to get something called ADB on my PC and then install the Mind G apps through there. And at this point, I was just happy to see another load screen and would you look at this Google Play Store we have actually done it and then immediately I get an error when I try to log into Google just give me a break but then I fixed it so Google Wallet still doesn't work it gives me an error but every other app works and it is a little bit faster so was it worth installing it no although the phone became completely usable as if it's the newest phone, it even has the Google shelf on it, which has all the news that I need. I spent like four or five hours trying to install this thing. And at this point, why not just buy like a hundred dollar Android that supports Android 14? But if you still have an older phone, like an S6, and you want to revive it, it's a good idea. Because apart from the battery and the camera, this thing is almost as good as any other phone.